Have you ever wanted to connect to your Unraid server remotely without having to tunnel into your local network just to check on the status of your server, check on maybe multiple Unraid servers that you have, and complete a few really great administrative actions? Well, Unraid Connect has recently been updated. It has a lot of new features. I think this is something that I'm gonna find really handy, especially when I spin up my second server for demos. And let's go ahead, get it set up, get it checked out, and see what it can do for us. So this is the Unraid Connect page. It is currently in beta, so it's something that they're really trying out now. And the main features that they have are the dynamic remote access, being able to manage your server remotely with Connect, which is really interesting. Deep linking, which allows you to have access to your settings and server sections. Again, this is all done without tunneling into your server. Um, you can do this entirely through any kind of network that you want which is really interesting. You can do a flash backup, real-time monitoring. You can customize tiles and themes. You can manage licenses for multiple Unraid servers. That's what I mentioned earlier. And they have quite a few languages supported. So let's go ahead and get it set up. So here I am in my server. We're gonna go ahead and go to the apps. And then we're gonna search for Unraid Connect. You're gonna go ahead and get this installed. I had just installed it, so just go ahead and get that one set up. Once that's done, we can go ahead and see it in our plugin list. And you can also notice in the top right-hand corner, we have this new symbol here. So we can go ahead and click this button. And now it's gonna say connect. Thank you for installing connect. Let's go ahead and sign into our Unraid account. Once you sign into your Unraid account, you're gonna to get to this page where it's gonna say register. So register this current server with Unraid Connect. We're gonna go ahead and do that. It's gonna bring us back to our main page here. And I've gotten this error both times that I've done this when I did it before, when I'm doing it on video, but it does seem to work anyhow, because now if we go ahead and click this button again, we can see that we are now connected. Now we can go ahead and open up Connect, sign in. And we can see our server. So we are on the same network currently as the server, but you can do this from anywhere. This will work. It's gonna look the exact same no matter where you are. It's going to perform the same way, whether you're at home, at work, at another office, on the go, on your phone, all that fun stuff. And we'll take a look at how it looks on the phone as well. So here is my server. It's called Node, home server. It's got the pro key. It's gonna show how much of your array is filled. So I'm at 33 terabytes out of 48 terabytes. It'll show how much is on the caches. So I have this hard drive cache that doesn't really get used for anything at all. And then I have my SSD cache, which is currently at 90%. Now, if we want, we can go into the details here and we can see a few things. So we can see this is just the uh, addresses and the name. Again, a little bit more info, the virtual machine. So I don't run any virtual machines currently on my Unraid. I run any virtual machines I need on Proxmox. For example, like my home assistant. This shows us our storage. This is gonna slowly load up with our Docker apps. We can also make this a little bit larger maybe. Yeah, we can make that bigger. Move these things around. So the moving around doesn't seem to be great so far. It is in beta, so things are gonna change, but we just have an open gap there. Maybe it's because this one's too large. So if we move this maybe to the end. Yeah, it's not liking that. Let's go ahead and refresh this. Let's see if the Docker apps loads. Oh, that's cool. If you go ahead and go to the little link icon here, if you click it, it'll bring you to your actual server page. So let's go ahead and check out the flash backup. So to activate our flash backup, if we go back into our Unraid and we go to our settings, we go to management access. We go down here and we can enable our flash backup. Let's go ahead and activate that. And now we have our flash backup activated. So that's pretty awesome. If we go back to our connect and we go back to our dashboard, we go back into the node, this hasn't updated yet, it seems. Oh, and there we go, it just took a second. And we now have our latest flash backup that we just got done, so that's awesome. 
Uh, our Docker apps also started to update, so that's great. We have 32 installed, 29 are running. It tells us when they were, um, how long they've been up for. So that's great as well. So if anything ends up happening, they get updated and they don't work, what have you, you can see the ones that I'm not currently working, not currently using, so that's also interesting. All right, so here we are on mobile and it looks very similar to how it looked on desktop. We have our sidebar here and then we have the dashboards. We're in the dashboard here. Very similar view to what we had. We have the array size and the cache sizes. We can go to manage and we can see some of the address information. So that's great. And then if we go back and we can go to the server details, we have a very similar view that we had. So everything's just kind of in a row here and you have to kind of touch the tops. You don't want to touch things that have scrollable stuff in there. It doesn't scale great uh, in comparison. I wonder if you change the size of these here, if it changes it at all. Uh, actually, one doesn't seem so because we had changed the size of the Docker apps on the, the desktop version. So maybe if you resize them here, then they, oh, you, you can only kind of really do it a little bit. You can't really do it too much. So there's just like an expanded and a collapsed view for everything. So not too much customization there. That'd be great if they could improve that as well. Um, if you're able to like hide or show some of these cards would be great, both on the desktop and the mobile version, because I don't really care to see my license key at the moment. Um, but yeah, overall, pretty simple. You know, there's not really a lot in this dashboard yet. So again, maybe in the future as they improve on this and as they bring it out of beta. Now, Again, this is a beta. I do hope that this ends up being improved upon. I hope they really learn from what a lot of the other dashboard apps do because at this current moment, this is just not enough uh, for a lot of people, I'm sure. It's great. It's very handy that you can access this directly from the web. You don't need to tunnel in. You don't need to set up any reverse proxies. You don't need to do your own tunnel like I've done with my Cloudflare tunneling. So it is nice that it's super easily accessible that way. Um, but at the current moment, it's just one, a little bit buggy. It's still in beta. Two, there's just not enough customization. And three, they're definitely not gonna support certain aspects or applications that are maybe less than ideal for large companies. Maybe some kind of legal issue, you know, like how I have all of my Cubitor and stuff listed all of my NZBD stuff listed on a bunch of my other dashboards. For example, I doubt we'll ever end up getting these kinds of lists, um, integrations with a lot of the Docker apps and so, and so on. If that does happen, it'll be great. I think they're really trying to appeal to people that use a lot of different dashboards and you know, maybe they're trying to make it a replacement. Maybe they're just trying to make this something that's a little bit more convenient for people. I'm not entirely sure. I do find this handy and I will find myself using it when I'm away for a while or if a uh, application has a quick issue, this might be just as easy for me to check as pulling up my dashboard. Um, again, I do like that you don't have to tunnel in, but things are taking a while to load. It does not load very easily or very quickly. I don't use virtual machines, so I think that's somewhere where this has come a lot more handy because you can spin up and spin down virtual machines from here. Supposedly, I don't have any set up, so I can't really do that. And you know, having your license key there is great. Another nice thing about this is that I can use it for multiple servers. So again, once I go ahead and set up the demo server, I can have them both side by side. That might be where this comes in a little bit more handy. It would be nice to be able to have the multiple servers on a, a singular web page that I can really easily access them. At the current moment though, I don't think it's a great replacement for current dashboards, unless you just want absolute bare bones. You just wanna check on the current status, check your array overall, maybe the, the total fill, check on your cache, make sure everything's fine. Um, but other than that, I don't think it's a replacement for things like Homar, and home page and other dashboards like that. If you are interested in me checking out more dashboard applications, I am thinking about doing something with home page. It's a little bit more complicated, but if you are interested, let me know down in the comments. 
be really interested to know. I don't want to, you know, push out a bunch of content that people really aren't interested in listening to. But this one did really interest me. It's great that Unraid is trying to do some stuff built into the actual software themselves. You know, you already lo logged into your account. Your keys are linked to your account. So this does add a little bit of convenience. And I'm hoping that maybe a year from now we do another video on this and there is some significant improvements in terms of the dashboard. Uh, significant improvements in terms of the customization, integrations, all that fun stuff. I'm really hoping that this can become a really easy dashboard replacement that people don't have to use a third party application if they don't want to. This can get a lot of that main stuff done, which would be great. And with all that said, I do hope you found this video helpful. And if not, I at least hope you found it interesting. If you did, I'd really appreciate it. If you like, subscribe. If you have any questions, comments, or feedback, leave those down in the comment section below. I'd be really interested to reply to them all. I'll get back to all of them as quickly as I can. Big thanks to my patron sponsors and big thanks to you for watching to the end of this video. If you do wanna see any other videos where I talk about Unraid, talk about the other dashboards that I've talked about already, you can go ahead and check out the playlist right up here somewhere. And as always, stay safe out there. I'll see you next time.